This is a this is a Phantom 17.5. Now I put the tape here just so when I connect it and accidentally short short this. But uh, this is the newer version. This is the Helix. Uh, so if you know that I have the 17.5 Phantom uh, icon in in my buggy, but uh, maybe trying this one out in the future. But the construction in general is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Just the machining, everything. Now, one of the differences between this motor and some of the current motors that are coming out is uh, this is a two piece. So you have the entire uh, case here. So this whole can is one piece and then the end bell is the other piece as opposed to uh, most of the other brand. Well, maybe not most, but uh, this is a Trinity, for example. Hobby wing is the same way. You have this front, the center, and then the back. Uh, something like this helps uh, with weight. I mean, that's the only reason why I think maybe. Uh, but something like this makes it easier to uh, install the rotor and make sure everything's lined up correctly because it's only two pieces you're lining up instead of three pieces. Uh, but. Uh, we're gonna try it out now usually i put it down i don't remember i think it's 35 then 40 45 etc i'm not going to do that because most of those lower uh timing options I, I don't use them that's the reason why so i'm just going to go to the higher options now this is out of the box and one of the things i do like about phantom and if you ever watch my very very old video uh they have a printout, so they test the motors. Every single motor is tested, and this is supposedly what my motor tested in. Now, this is using their equipment, so depending on the equipment, it may change. Uh, but these are the specs of this 17.5 motor. Uh, and it's nice because they give you the strength. Now, don't have the equipment to verify the strength of the uh, rotor at this time. Uh, so I'm just going to measure KVs. So let me go ahead and plug everything in. All right, timing pretty close. That's a 44, 45, 44. Uh, some other motors that uh, I've tried, timing is sometimes really, really off. Uh, but on this one, I think, I don't know if Trinity simply, sorry, not Trinity, uh, Phantom simply takes more care of the motors or what happens but it could also be because it's a two-piece bell, so it's easier to line them up. Usually, uh, the difference has to do with the end bell back here. Uh, there's those three little sensors, depending on the position. So if, if the rotor is off in relationship to that end bell, so that can change the, the timing difference between them. Let's look at KV. Now, there is something else I'm gonna show you in a bit. Uh, unfortunately, that's kind of high. I wanna go lower voltage. So I do not have a test for the other Phantom at 7.6. I have test at uh, 7.4. And uh, so these are going to be approximations as far as the comparison. And the reason why is uh, the voltage will affect the KV. And I'm gonna show you that in a bit. I know I've talked about it in the past. Uh, also in some comments, I know I've uh, put it in the comments. Uh, but I'm going to show you in a bit. Now, another thing to show you is these motors, they generally do come right at about five amps. Uh, so you have to be careful when you turn them up or you turn them down. Uh, but right now, uh, let me go ahead and do this real quick. Now the best would be to have a power supply and be able to adjust the voltage. Uh, just my power supply doesn't go down to this voltage. That's the issue. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to peak. All right, so volts are higher. Uh, we're looking at, uh, so if, let's see, I'm gonna cover up a number. Uh, oh, wow, that's interesting. Okay, KV actually went up. 
So that's, that's actually pretty good. RPM way, way higher. Uh, so there's a massive difference. It's interesting, look at the amps. Uh, it is a different battery that I'm using. I am using batteries. Uh, but some of the motors in the past that I've I have tested, usually when the voltage drops, the KV goes up. Uh, and that is fascinating. For me, that is fascinating. This thing is very, very consistent. Um, I don't know. Uh, if you have any insight, please comment below. Uh, like I said, some of the Trinity motors that I've had with the voltage fluctuation, as voltage goes down, KV goes up, but it doesn't go up enough to make up for the RPM loss due to the voltage once you calculate everything. So that is uh, fascinating. So uh, I'm gonna be switching off and on between uh, these two. And the reason why is because the old motor, the old 17.5 is at 7.4, so 7.6 would be best, although it doesn't seem to be making that much difference. So uh, now keep in mind, it's the KV I care about, not the RPM. I don't care about RPM. Uh, the reason why I'm saying that is I can calculate that with the voltage and the KV. I'm gonna turn the timing down, then I'll go up. So I'm just gonna go five degrees down and then five degrees up from where it is now. So it'll be a total of 10 from where I'm placing this. Uh, the end bell, very, very smooth, so easy. Uh, this feels uh, similar to the hobby wing. Uh, the hobby wing has a very nice end bell. When you tighten the end bell, you want to make sure, well, here the for the timing, you want to make sure, one, you don't over tighten, never over tighten, and two, go in a circular pattern. You don't want this to be skewed one way or another. And just really quick, this is what the hobby wing end bell looks like. Uh, so the machining is very, very good. Uh, both of these motors are much nicer than the Trinity. I'm not saying they're better than the Trinity, they're just nicer built. Uh, so timing here is pretty good. Now something like this, when you're pulling 3.8 amps, your, your runtime is gonna be great. Uh, it's not the best though, uh, as far as performance, but if, let's just say you're just bashing about you don't really care for that top speed. You're not competing, so that's not really an issue, and you just want the runtime. You can always lower the timing on the motor. It will run cooler, and it will run longer on the same pack for the same charge. Uh, and that's 3.8 amps. If you go, if you go below three, I mean, this thing's going to run for days. So if you're running, for example, just drawing two amps, 2.5 amps, turn the timing up. Uh, Let's see. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, so let's go ahead and try the other one, see what happens with the lower voltage. Uh, yeah, KV is pretty much the same. As far as I'm concerned, that's the same KV, uh, which is awesome. So uh, for the longest time, I, I was under the impression, just based on motors that I'd work with, that as the voltage dropped, the KV would drop as well. Now I know KV is referred to as the constant, uh, but it seemed to be constant at a particular voltage, which I guess doesn't make it that constant, uh, if it depends on voltage as well. But here it's, it's almost identical. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's the same. So we're looking at uh, 8.2 volts, that's uh, 3242. 3234, that's good enough as far as I'm concerned. Uh, KV actually went down a little, but not a not a big deal. So that being said, uh, I'm just gonna ignore the uh, voltage. So I'm gonna use the other battery, uh, but I need to turn up The timing. So timing previously was at about 50. Uh, I'm going to go to about 50. Should really go to about 52 because considering I'm at five amps, uh, if I go to 55, that may be way too high. Oh, this is so smooth. Well, let's go 55, see, see where we are. 
Uh, all right, so originally it was set at 54. Uh, so now it is 48, uh, which is fine. That's almost at five degrees that I was looking for. That's why I got a little confused. So the, the timing end bell is reading above 50. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. So if you have your motor, first of all, uh, motors are not identical. So no two motors are gonna be exactly the same. Uh, so just be careful. So if you look at the end bell, it reads about 53 timing. It's actually 48. 6.5 amps, so that is quite high. Uh, I would not run it that high unless it was a short race and I was desperate or by accident or it was a cold day. If it's a cold day, you'll probably be fine if you have a fan on the motor and it's a cold day. All right, well, uh, let me just punch this on the data table and then I'll go ahead and compare it with the previous motor and some of the other 17.5s. Uh, let's see, I was actually trying to see where to set it just to optimize it, and I did this run. So just for fun, I will go ahead and record this as well. So here's the data now for this. I do have a lot of other motors that I can compare, but I decided just to focus on these three uh, right here. I do think the Hobbywing G4 is better than the Trinity X-Factors, so I'm not going to bother with those. Uh, but do watch my video where I initially uh, analyzed the Hobbywing V10 G4. I do compare it to the Trinity, so you can get the numbers there. Uh, but if we look at these, so I have the Helix, this is the new one, and this is the old one. Uh, this is the one that's in my, my buggy right now. Uh, but comparing them, I've gone ahead and eliminated those uh, other two with the other voltage, and I know the voltage is different, but one of the things that I mentioned is I used to be under the impression that, well, KV I always understood as a constant, uh, which... For me, it was always shocking how it changed. And what I mean by that is uh, if I took, for example, a hobby wing or the Trinity, Trinity is the better example probably, as the voltage dropped, uh, the KV generally started climbing up. Well, uh, with the Phantom Helix, uh, not so much. It, it was actually the opposite. The voltage went up, uh, KV went up, but it wasn't that much difference. It was within, say, uh, 20. It so on the, uh, here, let's see, I'm looking at this data. So at 7.6 volts, the KV was 3,274 uh, versus here, 8.2, it's 3,298. So it's it's a little over 20. It's 24 KV difference, but it's, it's nothing. Uh, and then when I changed the timing, uh, it was even less, so at 40 degree timing average, so here 8.2, it's 3,242, uh, 3,242 right here. Uh, with 7.6 volts, it was 3,234, so the difference was even less. So it, anyway, I'm, I'm ignoring the voltage difference at this point. Uh, these phantom motors kind of blew my world, to be honest, when it came to that, because I could have sworn the other bit was true, but I guess not, not anymore. Uh, or maybe these motors are just that good where KV is actually a constant. I have no idea. I'm using the same equipment to test everything. Uh, but now to dive into these numbers. So there's different ways of doing it. Uh, we can actually go uh, by degrees of timing. And coincidentally, we have a 48 and a 48. So this works out. And one of the things that we notice is 6.6, uh, 6.5. So this is very, very close. So we could say these are the same. And KV, right off the bat, uh, the Phantom Helix RS is 3,506 versus 3,204. Now, at this time, I do not have equipment to test the Gauss on this motor. According to Trinity's test sheet that is supplied with the motor, this one's... Uh, 1,750 Gauss, this uh, rotor. And this rotor in length was just shy of 25 uh, millimeters, and the diameter was just shy of 12.5. Uh, so this is a spec rotor, uh, from my understanding. Uh, if we look at, uh, let's see, 
well here 47 that's close enough to the 46 so we'll compare this to the 46 the reason why is because the amperage is similar so we have a 47 versus a 46 here they match here they match and here this is a 47 so two of these match a and b uh, they match as far as timing amperage uh, 5.7 5.8 close enough kv old versus the new uh, there's a difference. So the KV did go up. Uh, the previous model, the Icon V2 Pro Spec, that one was 3,228 KV, and this one is 3,394. Uh, so there is a change. Uh, th there is an improvement. So if I had the Phantom Icon V2, which I do, uh, and if I were trying to consider a new motor to see what was out there, <laughs> which I am, was, uh, I, I would consider the Phantom. So th this is going to replace the motor in my buggy. I'm going to test it though in the future once I get some time to go and do some uh, carpet off-road. Uh, lately I've been doing on-road, well, some other things too. So I haven't had a chance to get as much track time as I, I would like. Uh, but that being said, let's look at a different one. I don't have anything else that is close. Uh, let's see, 40, nope, nothing else really to compare these except for these two. Uh, 48, well the timing is much higher so this doesn't, so at this point it doesn't matter. This is uh, the highest KV, it's under 6 amps which is probably what I would recommend you run. This is the highest I would run this. This is the highest I run this. Uh, compare to this so it no longer compares. So if we look at this one, it's under 5 amps. Uh, Runtime is going to be great. KV is greater and it's um, lower timing as well. Uh, so you're going to get a nice amount of torque, a good amount of KVs, slightly higher than these. Uh, if you look at this KV versus this KV, this thing is pulling 2 amps less uh, degrees. We're looking at 40 degrees. So the Phantom Helix RS is going to perform as far as KVs are concerned and RPM, it's going to be similar. Well, okay, RPM, ignore the RPM because that's going to be determined by the voltage, right? Take this, multiply it by that, and you should get approximately this number, something close. Uh, so that's the reason why. So ignore the RPM. But if we were to compensate and make this 8.2 or lower this to 7.4, uh, RPM would be um, similar. So this motor at peak would be performing similar to this motor at not peak, two amps less. Uh, so looks like the Phantom Helix is is the real deal, but we will see. I actually have to run it. I am going to run it. Uh, now, let's see. So now the important thing really would be Hobby Wing. So let's look at the Hobby Wing right over here. Oh, uh, just in case you're wondering, this is the Trinity X Factor, and this is with an 1800 uh, Gauss motor, so it'd be a very similar Gauss to this. I guess I can go ahead and compare it. Why not? Uh, 4.7, uh, 4.8, 3298 versus 3133. The helix, so the rotors are approximately the same Gauss, same strength. This one pulls more KV. So I would definitely go with the Phantom versus the Trinity X Factor. Uh, Trinity X Factor is old news, to be honest. Uh, if you have them, that's fine, right? They, they do the job. Uh, it is a motor that I've replaced across the board. So I've replaced every single Trinity X Factor. Uh, so I've been running slot machines, hobby wings, and now I'm going to be running Phantoms. Well, the new ones. I've been running this one for the longest time. This one replaced the Trinity a long time ago. Uh, that's a different story. Uh, let's see. Uh, so now I can focus on the hobby wing. Uh, if we go by amps, 4.7. All right, this one's close enough. 4.8. What's the timing? Very similar. Okay, so 44. Uh, all right, they're similar. This one's one degree off. So we have 45, 44, and then a 43 versus the 44. Uh, but we're looking at 3,298. Again, I have to run them. I have to test them. But... Uh, Based on the specs, it looks like it's difficult to beat a Phantom Helix. The only thing that could possibly be causing this is if the G4 has this magical, incredibly high Gauss rotor. So generally, the, generally, so if you have the same exact can, 
all right, uh, and you swap out the rotor for something with higher KV, uh, sorry, higher Gauss, the KV will generally go down. Yes, it will have more torque, but the KV will generally go down. Uh, that's assuming the same can. So if you were to take this, remove the rotor, and replace the rotor, those are sort of the effects you can expect to get. Uh, but here, I have no idea uh, what could be causing it at this point. Uh, these are very nice motors. Now, once you get into this amp, uh, right, see, there isn't much change now that I notice. Yeah, there isn't much change either. Uh, so they're all consistent. Could be the can, it could be the design, everything that they say, the, uh, I think they call it dual balancing or double balancing, I forget they use on the Phantom Helix. Now, I'm going to be honest, the construction is beautiful. Both of these motors are beautifully constructed. Um, as far as aesthetics, well, that's up to you. I mean, I didn't buy them for aesthetics, but both of them are very, very smooth. Uh, Phantom, uh, it could be the silver plating, maybe. Phantom, that's something Phantom has. It, it's silver plating everywhere. Uh, it could be. But to be honest, at this point, I'm not really sure what the... Uh, differences that could be causing uh, the big change because it is, as far as I'm concerned, it's a great, it's a big change. Uh, just here versus this. Uh, again, similar timing, similar amperage, 3,045 versus 3,298. Um, it's quite a difference. So it's, uh, it's actually pretty nice. The, the end bell, uh, the screws are here off to the side. Uh, so they're very short screws. Uh, I do like this design, and the reason why is it limits the stretch. So the other motors, they have long screws that go along the entire motor. And uh, they're, keep in mind, they're thin screws. Here, let me just go ahead and grab, for example, this one. Uh, this is just the can. I don't have the broder in it. Uh, but the screws go all the way. So you can accidentally apply more stretch on one screw than the other just because of the length. Uh, it's the same thing with the hobby wing. So if you've seen the hobby wing motor, or if you've seen my videos with the hobby wing, it's the same, same idea. You have these screws that go all the way through. Uh, so then you have to worry about the stretch of the screws. Versus this, uh, you don't have to worry about the stretch uh, like you would in the others because, well, they go this way. Uh, so that's actually quite nice. Oops. All right. Oh, this is nice. Okay. All right. Wow. Looks like they really thought of everything. I like this. Uh, all right. We have the shims here. All right. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rotor out. Uh, let's see. Well, anyway, the can, it's its beautiful. I mean, the machining is beautiful. Very nice construction. I really do like the silver plating. There's silver plating everywhere. Uh, this is silver plated as well, just to help with contact, uh, which is a very nice feature. So the brass is silver plated. Uh, looks very clean on the inside. The other thing too is the windings. You can't really tell, but they are a beautiful copper color. Uh, sometimes uh, you'll get some windings where it looks like the, I forget what the material is called, I want to say epoxy for now, but uh, whatever the insulator, that enamel that is used, is caked on heavily on some spots compared to others. Uh, this one seems to be pretty nice. Uh, but anyway, here's, here's the can, and now the rotor. I am curious, uh, let's see, according to this, it should be a, oh wow, that was a 2.5, 2.5, 25, uh, all right, nice, and according to this, it's a FAN for Phantom, it looks like a 1956-1, oh, let's see if it is a 12.5, slowly, uh. 
Don't do that. All right, well, it's, it's close. It's close, 12.4. 12.4, well, let's see, it should be 25, 25, close enough, uh, for 25, so that's pretty good, uh, let's see, rubber. Right now, according to Phantom, this should be a 1750, so 1,750 Gauss uh, rotor. Again, at this time, I do not have anything to test it with, mainly because, well, I, I don't at this time. Uh, all right, so the bushing is there. Go ahead and reassemble this. Uh, I actually do have the Phantom bearing oil. I do like their oil. I do not know who makes their oil, but it's always a good idea to put a drop in there and then a drop back here as well. Oh, uh, quick little note. So when you're tightening, let me remove this. Uh, see the screws? One, two, three. So when you loosen those, this actually has a little bit of play. That's the reason why when you're setting it and you're changing the timing, you need to make sure this isn't skewed one way or the other or else that's going to uh, affect your timing. And they come very well assembled out of the factory. And that's it. So I can go ahead and put the screws. I'll just start one. Uh, they do use a thread locking compound on here. So you do not need to add more. And these screws, uh, when they go in there because of the compound, they do go in nice and snug. Right, so this one's going all the way to now the next two. All right, so this one I am going to be testing in my buggy. This is a B6, uh, B63 of the previous gen. Uh, I have the old Phantom in it, so the only thing I'm gonna do, probably in another video, hopefully I can get it soon, is, uh, run the motor, just get used to the track, and then I'm gonna swap it out and see what I think. Uh, it's, again, not I'm not going to miss with the gearing or anything, which you always need to adjust gearing because every motor is different, but those are my plans for now. Uh, it would just take too long for me to deal with the gearing. Uh, but that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was entertaining or at least informative. Uh, Please subscribe if you have not, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, 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 oh,